Hi everybody, Fintan here from Damson Cloud, and this week I want to talk about the difference between Google Groups and delegated access to Gmail for a shared mailbox. So really we're talking about shared mailboxes and what is the best option for you and your organization. And really it depends on your requirements. So let's get into it. Google Groups is a, a distribution list system really for Google that allows you to set up um, distribution lists which are emails that essentially forward email on um, to another account. These are common for info at, or maybe a hello at, uh, you might see those on, on uh, websites. And they essentially forward emails on to five or 10 or 100 or 1000 people. Um, companies also use them as well for all team at your domain.com where you can email everybody in your team. In Google, you can also use them for managing permissions and things like that. So you could have a marketing at that you add to a Google calendar and it adds everybody in the marketing team or the entire company if you had the all company one or to a shared drive or, or Google document. And again, it would add everybody from that group. So that's what Google Groups are generally used for. Now, there is another functionality functionality within Google Groups called Collaborative Inbox. Um, if you've ever used a message board or indeed used Google's Google message board, um, Google Groups, uh, then you will be familiar with this interface. It's essentially a cut down version of a Gmail account. I'm gonna demonstrate it now um, in a minute, but <clears throat> It is distinctly different from delegated access, which is the other way to have a shared mailbox within Google. And a delegated access is often used for say, a PA having access to an executive's mailbox, but can also be used for say, a support team or an accounts department um, to have access to a full mailbox that all of them share. So support at yourcompanydomain.com or accounts at. And with the delegated access, it is a full Gmail mailbox and it has all the full capabilities of a Gmail mailbox. Now, Google Groups is actually free, so there's no additional cost to adding a um, email address for a Google Group. Whereas delegated access, if you want an accounts or your support at as, a, as an example, then that's going to cost an, an entire license. So whatever your Google plan is, it's gonna cost the same as an additional user. So most companies will try to look at Google Groups to see if that fits the requirements for whatever the email distribution list is, or indeed perhaps the shared mailbox might be. And then if there's a reason that the, that the organization, that the user, that the team require a full mailbox, then they, they will probably migrate them to or set up a delegated account, okay? Now I'm gonna jump in and do a quick demonstration of both of these. So I'm signed into my Dams and Training account here. I have delegated access to the support demo at Dams and Training. And I'm also a member of the Google group called Dams and at Dams and Training.com, okay? Uh, and at the moment I've set it up that all the emails actually go to the same account. So if I want to access the delegated account, all I have to do is click on the um, delegated account. I don't have to sign in. I'm already um, in the account. You can see it looks like a full Gmail account. I can set up things like filters. I can do full search within here. Um, and I'm, I'm able to set up filters so that as someone emails me in, so this responded one or this support one, everything from this particular person or this particular domain, my customer, get assigns this particular uh, label, which is kind of Google's equivalent of folders. Um, I've actually set up a manual one here called responded. So after I've, I've responded to an email, I can actually assign a label to it so that my team knows that I've responded to it. And if I respond within here, um, then everybody on my team that signs in will see that I've responded from here. And I can respond as you, as you, as you saw there, I can actually respond as, um, in this case, I'm responding to Sandra Jones, but I can actually respond as the support account because I'm signed into the support uh, account here. So that's where the emails are coming from. And I can have a different signature as well set up there um, so that um, people will, will uh, see a different signature than my own personal account. Now, if I want to access the Google Groups, I've actually got to go to the Groups interface. So I'm going back to my personal account now and I'm going to the Google Group. 
And if I go to the Google Groups interface, you can see this looks a little bit different. Um, I've got the Damson, um, at Damson Training Group that I've set up, with, which has the same um, emails in it. And so in this example, when I'm doing support, I don't have the kind of nice fancy filters and things like that. I don't have as much in, in terms of detail for, for search because it's basically a message board system. Um, and so I can do a certain amount of searching, but you can see it's not uh, exactly the same. I can, however, within here, add filters or, or sorry, add labels manually. So I can add a little responded label if I want to. Uh, I can untick it off that one. Um, and I could add it onto this guy here. I'm going to manually add the responded and support labels on there and apply those. Uh, and so that will apply them there. You can see they're not colored like the other ones. Um, I do have a uh, star functionality, so I can star an email. I can also assign them. So this email is assigned to Ivan, but if I wanted, I could assign it to somebody else or I could assign it to myself. Uh, so anybody in, so so now I've taken over this. Anybody in the team, I could, I could assign a particular email to. So this one here, I could assign it to somebody else and I could type in Ivan's name. And because he's in that Google group, he appears and I can click done and now he has been assigned to that. But you can see that although I do have the kind of conversations and the labels, it is more basic uh, than the Gmail account. But for some shared mailboxes, that might be fine and, and that might uh, have the functionality that you require. And if your, your use case is very simple, then probably something like a Google group is fine. Um, within the group settings, in order to have the collaborative inbox, you need to make sure that that is enabled. It gives you some additional features and the shared uh, labels as well is an additional one. Uh, the third option, which I didn't mention earlier on, is some sort of third party solution. So this is an example of a third party solution called Hiver that basically augments your Gmail environment. And you can see here, if I just pause this video, we can actually see that this person has some additional items here called assigned to me and customers and fulfillment that obviously they've created. They've got email templates as well. Um, and so this augments your Gmail environment so that uh, your team can have a kind of a full shared mailbox experience, what, what's, what um, someone would sort of refer to as a, as a full shared mailbox experience. Um, and this allows, as I said, for things like um, template emails. You can have template emails in the delegated mailbox one, um, but you can also sort of assign things. Um, you can have uh, reports and things like that on how quickly people are responding to emails. You can see if, if something's open, assign statuses, assign it to people within the company as the person is doing here, add notes and things like that to specific emails. So it's a lot more in depth. Obviously, again, this is a third party tool, so there's an additional cost. Um, but I just wanted to mention it because there are multiple uh, thir third party tools that allow you to have a collaborative inbox from within your email account. And that's the difference here that this person um, is actually within their own email account. So I'm not leaving it to open up a second tab, which is one thing that um, frustrates some people. And certainly if you're a, a, a team or a customer that requires access to multiple shared mailboxes, then an add-on like Hiver would be very valuable and um, probably a must because if you imagine if you had access to maybe five or 10 shared mailboxes, you would have five or 10 tabs and that would be kind of, uh, would get a little bit unwieldy really after a while. So that's it for me. I hope you guys found this useful. Um, I think that, you know, shared mailboxes and Google groups are both two very powerful tools. They just have very different use cases. And really, it just depends on what are your requirements as a business. If it's something that you're unsure about, do feel free to reach out to Damson Cloud. We have customers with these kind of questions and queries all of the time, and we would be delighted to help you as well. Thanks very much, guys. And I will see you next week.